Hi, it's Jane with Scraptastic Yarns, and it's another installment of Hashtag 50 Gone by 2024. I do hope that you guys are enjoying these. Let me know if you are. I'll keep them going as long as I can. Alright, today we are going to discuss senior exercise and fitness tips. Now, the majority of you that watch my channel are a little older. I know there are some young folks that watch it, but you know what? Even if you're young, you can learn from these, and you can use these tips for your own activities as well. No matter your age or physical condition, it's never too late to start exercising and get fit. These easy tips will help you get started safely and make it fun. What are the benefits of exercise for older adults? There has to be some, right? There are many reasons why we tend to slow down and become more sedentary with age. It may be due to health problems, weight or pain issues, or even worries about falling. Or perhaps you think that exercise simply isn't for you. But as you grow older, an active lifestyle becomes more important than ever to your health more important. A recent Swedish study found that the physical activity was the number one contributor to longevity, adding extra years to your life, even if you don't exercise, start exercising until your senior years. But getting active is not just about adding years to your life, it's about adding life to your years repeat that. It's about adding life to your years. Getting moving can help boost your energy, maintain your independence, and who among us as we get older doesn't want to be independent? Protect your heart and manage symptoms of illness or pain as well as your weight. Regular exercise is also good for your mind, mood, and memory. It's your mood and outlook it's never too late to find simple, enjoyable ways to become more active, to improve your mood and outlook and reap all of the physical and mental health benefits of exercise. This impacts your mental health more than you can even imagine. Physical Health Benefits of Exercise for Seniors As an older adult, exercise can help you to maintain or lose weight. As your metabolism naturally slows with age, crap, who wants that? Maintaining a healthy weight can become a challenge. Regular exercise helps increase your metabolism and build muscle mass, helping your body to burn more calories. Reduce the impact of illness and chronic disease. People who exercise tend to have improved immune and digestive functioning, better blood pressure, and that's important, bone density, that's important for us women, and a lower risk of Alzheimer's disease, diabetes, obesity, heart disease, osteoporosis, and certain cancers. Enhance your mobility, flexibility, and balance. Exercise improves your strength, flexibility, and posture which in turn can help with your balance and coordination and reduce your risk of falls. Strength training can also help alleviate the symptoms of chronic conditions such as arthritis. And that's a big one for many of us. And let's talk about that balance. There is a simple exercise that you can do and you can do it standing at the kitchen counter, while you're doing your dishes, holding on to a chair, and it's simple. Just stand up on the balls of your feet for 30 seconds or more. That is going to help with your balance in a way that you cannot even begin to imagine. One of the other things is to stand on one foot for as long as you can. And yes, you can put your arms out to the side to hold your 
balance, those kind of things. But you want to do that while you're on just one foot, then change over to the other. What you're going to find is very interesting for me. I always thought my right side was stronger, but it's my left side that is actually stronger when I am standing one foot, that left foot, and the right foot is up. I found that rather interesting. There are mental health benefits. Exercise can also help you to improve how well you sleep. Quality sleep is vital for your overall health as you get older. Regular activities can help you fall asleep faster, sleep more deeply, and wake feeling more energetic and refreshed. It will boost your mood and self-confidence. Exercise is a huge stress reliever and the endorphins produced can actually help reduce feelings of fat, sadness, depression, and anxiety. Being active and feeling strong can also help you feel more confident. Improve your brain function. Activities like Sudoku crossword puzzles can help keep your brain active, but little comes close to the beneficial effects of exercise on the brain. It can aid brain functions as diverse as multitasking and creativity and help to prevent memory loss, cognitive decline, and dementia. Getting active may even help slow the progression of brain disorders such as Alzheimer's disease. Overcoming obstacles as you to getting act, active as you age. This is a big one for many of us, especially if we haven't been very active. Starting or maintaining a regular exercise routine can be challenge, challenging at any age. You heard that, at any age. And it doesn't get any easier as you get older. You may feel discouraged by your health problems, aches, pains, or concerns about injuries or falls. If you've never exercised before, you may not know where to begin. Or you may think you're too old or frail, and you can never live up to the standards you set when you were younger. And isn't that true for many of us as we age? Or maybe you just think that exercise is boring. Mine? I'm allergic to sweat. Not really. I just don't like to sweat. While these may seem like good reasons to slow down and take it easy as you age, there are even better reasons to get moving. Becoming more active can energize your mood, relieve stress, help you manage symptoms of illness and pain, and improve your overall sense of well-being. And reaping the rewards of exercise doesn't have to involve strenuous workouts or even trips to the gym. You can gain the benefits from adding more movement and activity to your life, even in small ways. No matter your age or physical condition, it's never too late to get your body moving, boost your health and outlook, and improve how well you age. Six Myths About Aging and Activity Myth 1. There's no point to exercising. I'm going to get old anyway. Regular physical activity helps you look and feel younger and stay independent longer. It also lowers your risk for a variety of conditions, including Alzheimer's and dementia, heart disease, diabetes, certain cancers, high blood pressure, and obesity. And the mood benefits of exercise can be just as great at 70 or 80 as they were at 20 or 30. Myth 2. Exercise puts me at risk of falling down. Here's the fact. Regular exercise by building strength and stamina prevents loss of bone mass and improves balance, actually reducing your risk of falling. Myth number three. It's too frustrating. I'll never be the athlete I once was. And I ain't never going to be that athlete because I never was in the first place. 
fact, changes in hormones, metabolism, bone density, and muscle mass mean that your strength and performance levels inevitably decline with age. But that doesn't mean you can no longer derive a sense of achievement from physical activity or improve your health. The key is to set lifestyle goals that are appropriate for your age. And remember, a sedentary lifestyle takes a much greater toll on athletic ability than biological aging. Myth 4. I'm too old to start exercising. Here's the fact. You're never too old to get moving and improve your health. In fact, adults who became active later in life often show greater physical and mental improvements than their younger counterparts. If you've never exercised before, or it's been a while, for me it's been a while, you won't be encumbered by the same sports injuries that many regular exercisers experience in later life. In other words, there aren't as many miles on your clock, so you'll quickly start reaping the rewards. <laughs> and that's a bonus in itself, right? Just begin with gentle activities and build up from there. Myth 5. I can't exercise because I'm disabled. Here's the fact. If you're chair-bound, you obviously face special challenges. However, you can lift light weights, stretch, and do chair aerobics, chair yoga, or even chair tai chi to increase your range of motion, improve muscle tone and flexibility, and promote cardiovascular health. Many swimming pools offer access to wheelchair users, and you can also find adaptive exercise programs for wheelchair sports such as basketball. Number six, I'm too weak or I have too many aches and pains. Here's a fact. Getting moving can help you manage pain and improve your health, energy, strength, and self-confidence. Many older people find that regular activity not only helps stem the decline in strength and vitality that comes with age, but actually improves it. The key, as always, is to start off gently. What if you hate to exercise? If you dread working out, you're not alone. But you don't have to exercise until you're soaked in sweat or every muscle aches to make a big difference or every muscle aches to make a big difference to your health. Think about activities that you enjoy and how you can incorporate them into an exercise routine. Listen to music or an audiobook while lifting weights. Window shop while walking laps at the mall, if you can find the mall. <sighs> we went to our local mall here in Lycoming County and it was depressing. I think there's maybe five stores that are still open. Everything was shut up tight. Get competitive while playing tennis. Not happening here. <laughs> Take photographs on a nature hike. Now that's a lot of fun to do. Meet new people at a yoga class or fitness center. And many of us have senior centers that offer all kinds of exercise programs, Tai Chi, you name it, to help us get a little healthier. Watch a favorite movie or TV show while walking on the treadmill. Or do what my husband and I used to do. We called it commercial exercises. When the commercial was on, we'd either do chair squats or we'd get up and just march in place. <laughs> Instead of chatting with a friend over coffee, chat while walking, stretching, or doing some strength training. Walk the golf course instead of using a cart. Walk or play fetch with a dog. If you don't own a dog, Offer to take a neighbor's dog for a walk or volunteer as a pet shelter or a rescue group. They always need people to help walk and play with the dogs. Go for a run, walk, or cycle when you're feeling stressed. 
See how much better you feel afterwards. Find an exercise buddy. Someone whose company you really enjoy and try activities you never tried before. You may find something you love. At worst, you spent time with a good friend. And that's always important for our mental health as well. Build a balanced exercise plan. Building that balanced exercise plan. Staying active is not a science. Just remember that mixing different types of physical activity helps to both keep your workouts interesting and improve your overall health key is to find activities that you enjoy based on the four building blocks of fitness. These are balance. What it is. Balance exercises help maintain standing and stability whether you're stationary or moving around. Try yoga, tai chi, or posture exercises to gain confidence with balance. Why it's good for you. It improves your balance, your posture, and the quality of your walking. It also reduces your risk of falling or fear of fallings. Cardio. What is it? Cardiovascular exercise uses large muscle groups in rhythmic motions over a period of time. Get your heart pumping and may even leave you feeling a little short of breath. Cardio workouts include walking, just walk a little faster, stair climbing, swimming, hiking, cycling, rowing, tennis, and dancing. So dance! Why it's good for you. Cardio exercises help loosen fatigue, help loosen, help lessen fatigue and shortness of breath. It also promotes independence by improving endurance for daily activities such as walking, house cleaning, and errands. Gotta get a drink. Strength and power training. What it is. Strength training builds up muscles with repetitive motion using a weight or external resistance from machines, free weights, elastic bands, or your own body weight. Power training is often strength training done at a faster speed to increase power and reaction times. Why it's good for you. Strength training helps prevent loss of bone mass, builds muscle, and improves balance. Important for staying active and avoiding falls. Power training can improve your speed while crossing the street, for example or prevent falls by enabling you to react quickly if you start to trip or lose balance. Building strength and power will help you stay independent and make day-to-day -day activities such as opening a jar, getting in and out of a car, and lifting objects easier. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Flexibility. What it is. Flexibility workouts challenge the ability of your body's joints to move freely through a full range of motion. This can be done through st stationary stretches or stretches that involve movement to keep your muscles and joints supple and less prone to injury. Yoga is an excellent means of improving flexibility. In our area, there are not a lot of yoga classes. I would love to have a yoga class. So, when I turn to yoga, I actually turn to YouTube for yoga in the chair, yoga for seniors, restorative yoga programs, those kind of things. Why it's good for you. Flexibility helps your body stay limber and increases your range of movement for ordinary physical activities, such as looking behind you while driving tying your shoes, shampooing your hair, or even playing with your grandchildren. So think about that, how often many of us as we get older have trouble turning our heads to see. Activities that are beneficial to older adults. 
Walking. Walking is the perfect way to start exercise. Requires no special equipment aside from a pair of comfortable walking shoes and it can be done almost anywhere. Senior sports or fitness classes. Exercises with others can help you keep motivated while also provide, providing a source of fun, stress relief, and a place to meet friends. And it is. And I'll tell you, we have quite a few laughs when we do our little exercises at the, at the Senior Center. Water aerobics and water sports. Working out in water reduces stress and strain on the body joints. Most YMCAs, or YWCAs also, have programs for, like, uh, what is it? Something stress in the hinges or, you know, pain in the hinges, arthritis, those kind of things that are great. Yoga. Yoga combines a series of poses and breathing. Moving through the pose helps improve strength, flexibility, and balance and can be adapted at any level. Tai Chi and Qigong. These martial arts inspired systems of movement can increase balance and strength. Classes for seniors are often available at local YMCA, YWCAs, and community centers. Look to your senior centers for these. Get started safely. Getting active is one of the healthiest decisions you can make as you age, but it's important to do it safely. As always, get medical clearance from your doctor before starting an exercise program, especially if you have a pre-existing condition. Ask if there are any activities that you should avoid. Always get medical clearance. Consider health concerns. Keep in mind how your ongoing health problems affect your workouts. For example, Diabetics may need to adjust the timing of medication and meal plans when setting an exercise schedule. Listen to your body. Listen to your body. Exercise should never hurt or make you feel lousy. Stop exercising immediately and call your doctor if you feel dizzy, short of breath, develop chest pain or pressure, break out in a cold sweat, or experience pain, and put your routine on hold if your joint is red, swollen, or tender to the touch. The best way to cope with injuries is to avoid them altogether. In the first place, if you regularly experience pain or discomfort after exercising, try exercising for less time but more frequently throughout the day. Since I've started walking more, I've found my hips, they get cranky. And I mean they get to where they just feel like it's going to throw me down, the pain in my hips. So what do I do? I will stop. Generally, by stopping in place, I have a bottle of water with me, take a few drinks of the water, rest my hips, then I can move on. If they're really bad, I just stop, period. Start slow and build up steadily. If you haven't been active in a while, build up your exercise little bit by little bit. Try spacing workouts in 10 minutes increments twice a day or try just one class each week. If you're concerned about falling or have any ongoing heart problems, start with easy chair exercises to slowly increase your fitness and confidence. Prevent injury and discomfort by warming up, cooling down, and keeping water handy. Commit to an exercise schedule for at least three or four weeks so that it becomes a habit and forces yourself to stick with it. It's much easier if you find activities you enjoy. I've always enjoyed walking. Experiment with mindfulness. Instead of zoning out when you exercise, 
Try to focus on how your body feels as you move. The rhythm of your breathing, the way your feet strike the ground, or your muscles flexing, for example. Practicing mindfulness will improve your physical condition faster, better relieve stress and anxiety, and better help you to avoid injuries or accidents. If you have an injury, disability, weight problem, or diabetes, while there are challenges that come with exercising with mobility issues, issues, by adopting a creative approach, you can overcome any physical limitations and find enjoyable ways to get active and improve your health and well-being. Support activity levels with the right diet, and that you have to determine for yourself as well as with maybe your doctor or nutritionist. Diet as well as exercise can have a major impact on your energy, mood, and fitness. Many older adults don't get sufficient high-quality protein in their diets, despite evidence suggesting they need more, more than younger, younger people to maintain energy levels and lean muscle mass. Promote recovery from illness, from illness, from illness and injury, and support overall health. Older adults without kidney disease or diabetes should aim for about 0.5 grams of protein per pound of body weight. Vary those sources of protein instead of relying on just red meat. Include more fish, poultry, beans, and eggs. Reduce the amount of processed carbohydrates you consume. You know, pastries, cakes, pizza, cookies, chips. And replace them with high quality protein. Snack on nuts and seeds instead of chips. Replace a baked dessert with Greek yogurt. Swap out slices of pizza for a grilled chicken breast and a side of beans. Tips for staying motivated. It's easy to become discouraged when illness, injury, or changes in the weather interrupt your routine and seem to set you back to square one. But there are ways to stay motivated when life's challenges get in the way. Focus on the short-term goals, such as improving your mood and energy levels and reducing stress, rather than the goals such as weight loss, which can take longer to achieve. Reward yourself when you successfully complete a workout, reach for a new fitness goal, Simply show up on a day when you are tempted to ditch your activity plans. Choose something you look forward to, but don't allow yourself to do it till after exercising, such as having a hot bath or a favorite cup of coffee. Keep a log. A log is real important for you. Writing down your activities or even use an app to track them. It not only holds you accountable, but is also a useful reminder of your accomplishments. Find support. When you work out with a friend or family member, you can encourage and motivate, motivate each other. How to stay fit when your routine changes. And these are some easy tips when you're on vacation. Many hotels have fitness centers. Bring along your exercise clothing or equipment, resistance band, bathing suit, or even your walking shoes. Get out and see the sights on foot rather than just by the bus tour. This also helps you stay fit when your routine changes. Caring for an ill spouse is taking up too much of your time. This one is a hard one and I didn't practice it and I probably should have. Work out to an exercise video when your spouse is napping. Ask a family member or friend to come over so you can go for a walk. Here's another one. Your usual exercise buddy moves away. Ask another friend to go with you on your daily walk. Reach out to other adults in your area who are in the same boat. So be the one to break that ice. Join an exercise class at your local community center or see. Sorry.
Camera stop. Join an exercise class at your local community center or senior center. This is a great way to meet other active people. Here's a big one. Especially for those of us that have lost a life partner. You move to a new community. Well, I'm not planning on moving. There is that possibility. Check out fitness centers, parks, community websites, and recreation associations in your new neighborhood. Look for activities that match your interests and abilities. If illness keeps you out of action for a few weeks, wait until you feel better and then restart your activity. Gradually build back up to your previous level of activity. If you're recovering from an Ill injury or an illness, Talk with your doctor about specific exercises and activities you can do safely. Start slowly and gradually build up your activity level as you become stronger. Those are some great ways to increase your activity. Um, there are a lot of tips and there are a lot more tips. Uh, I apologize for going so long on this, but I really think it's important for a lot of us that are older and even mothers who find it's hard to get exercise in. Take your kids with you. They're going to enjoy walking. But do it safely. Alright guys, get out there. Be kind to one another. Be kind to yourself as always. Take it slow. Take it easy. You'll get there. If you have a goal in mind, you can achieve it if you just work at it. It may not be the exact goal that you were planning on. It may be something that was a little less than what you expected. But you are capable of meeting that goal. Alright guys, that's it for today. Be kind to one another, love one another. And, you know, get out there and take a walk. Enjoy the beauty and the splendor of the world that surrounds us. Enjoy those marvels that God created for all of us to enjoy. See you guys again soon. Bye.